Plasticity, as you might know if you watch my channel, is a powerful CAD tool specifically designed to bring advanced CAD capabilities into artistic workflows such as film production, video game development, 3D printing, as well as product prototyping and manufacturing. Now, Plasticity comes in two distinct pricing tiers, Indie and Studio, and despite their names, these licenses aren't strictly categorized for independent developers versus studios instead you might consider them like plasticity and plasticity pro each offering uh, different capabilities now in this video i hope to try and clarify the key differences between the two licenses and help you make an informed decision on which one is right for you now, at the time of recording, the Indie license is priced at 149 USD plus local taxes, and the Studio license is 299 USD plus taxes. However, it is worth noting that in the coming weeks around mid-August 2025, um, the price of the Indie license will increase to 175 USD. The exact date isn't set yet, but if you are considering the Indie license or you're in your trial period, now could be a great time to secure the Indie license before the price increase takes effect. And don't forget, you can always get the extra discount on your new Plasticity license by using my discount coupon code REFUGE10 at checkout on any license. Now, on the website here, um, we've got the indie license and the studio license and this sort of shows uh, side by side but I have made my own comparison PDF just it's a little bit easier to compare each license so we've got indie here on the left and studio on the right so the price is obviously double for the studio license although that's changing it's going to go up to 175 soon for the um, indie license and it will remain 299 for the studio okay the second thing is that you've got node lock that means how many machines you can install your license onto on the indie license you can do two machines so if you've got a lot of devices maybe this one well a lot of devices that you want to install plasticity onto this one might not do for you but this one might now um this is where it starts to vary a little bit more so the modeling tools um all of the main modeling tools are in the indie license but more powerful tools like um uh x nerves and uh stuff are available in um the studio license okay and different import and export options so Xnerbs is not available in the Indie license, so that locks you out of things like Square, Align, Explicit um, Control on the Rebuild, uh, and I did put Continuity Tools in here, but that's actually incorrect. Um, and here with uh, the Studio license, we do get the advanced surfacing tools like Xnerbs um, and anything that's based off Xnerbs like Square, Align. Um, explicit rebuild and other Xnerbs powered uh, tools as they get added as well, right? Um, there might be a couple of other things that I've missed here that are Xnerbs based. Um, now on the Indie license, you only get access to the stable releases for one year after you've um, bought your license. And then if you uh, renew your license, you'll get another 12 months. On the studio license, you get access to the beta program, which means that you can use features early um, on the unstable builds. And this can be pretty handy because there is like a, you know, the new stable releases seem to only come out two to three times a year. So having access to some tools, sometimes months in advance, is really handy. Now, they both have access to the Blender Bridge, uh, which is a plugin for Blender, um, which you can use. Um, so that's on both the Indie and the Studio. They both include 12 months of updates and then you can choose to renew or if you don't want to renew, you can just keep the latest version that was released before your maintenance ended. So if you buy it today from one year from now, um, then 
uh, you'll be able to get the latest release to whatever one year from now was. And then you can leave it for a couple of years and then renew when there's some new features or you could just renew every year like I do to support the development. Now, if you want to renew within the, I think it's like a couple of months after, you know, your uh, license has expired, you can get a discounted pricing. It's $100 for the indie. Um, that's going to increase, I think, with the price increase, but it's TBA at the moment. And then it's $175 uh, to increase the studio license. Um, you can upgrade from indie to studio and it costs basically the difference, but it resets or extends your maintenance for a further 12 months. Um, and yeah, so it's perpetual node locked licenses. So once you paid for it, you get to keep like I said, using it forever. So that's a really, really handy feature because a lot of softwares these days are subscription only. Plasticity is not subscription only. Let's say you're happy with what features you have. You don't need to renew your license. So this is really rare in the modern world and it's a really, really good feature. Commercial use is allowed with the indie license and um, studio license It's also allowed, but it's worth noting that you're required to get a studio license um, if you've got a company for more than 10 employees and each individual user will need their own studio license, so per user. So let's say you've got a company of 12 employees and three of them are using plasticity as part of their day-to-day -day or part of their work, then each three of those uh, individual staff members will need their own studio license. If you're on the indie license, you're working with traditional surfacing tools like Patch, Loft, and Raise Degree. Um, while Patch and Loft are great for basic forms, they can be a bit limiting when aiming for smooth, high quality transitions, especially when dealing with curvature across multiple directions. But so before we go into the XNURB stuff, I think it's best that we do not overlook one of the most powerful tools that's available in both the indie and studio licenses and that is raised degree so i just want to highlight this because if you are considering a studio license and there's certain things that you want to do um, you might be able to get away with that on an indie license right so if you can see here i've got four faces selected right and if you look down here at the selection it says that they're planes now if i press shift s once that changes to a spline surface and then as i raise the degree again okay um i can get these uh control points here so if i start to um select these control points right i can then start to use commands like scale right scale these out like so okay and we start to build up these funny shapes right so we can actually do this on this top surface as well okay and we can just i'm i'm just making nothing here but you'll see that very quickly i was able to build up something with a complex uh surface here okay um and if we go from our different modes we can see that this surface here has crazy reflections and different things that you would find um and quite cool continuity there as well from using more complex surfacing tools so it is worth mentioning that raise degree is a powerful command i've done a whole video on this um and you should check that out i'll put it in uh up there somewhere next we want to have a look at x nerbs versus loft okay so traditionally you know you can loft um things together like so by pressing l and then you can hold down shift and you can use guides right to bring that together right and the guides that i've used here if we go into point mode you can see that that's green down here which means it's connected so when it's not connected it's pink and then when it is connected it's got this sort of green highlight so that is connected so Okay, so with the X nerves, we can start to hold down shift and add these in. Okay, and then we can really pull that off, even though this one's not touching, right? So there's a lot of scenarios where you can use that. 
Now you might notice it doesn't fully intersect, but it does its best attempt, right? And you can do that. And there's a lot of different things that you can do with Xnerbs. I'm not going to cover it all here, but you can try and change the quality of it. Okay. And then if it's a quad sided um, scenario, right, which is like we can hit um, quad sided and we can even uh, mess with the flatness and the tension and things like that. Okay. So that's really cool. Okay. And that can speed up your workflow a lot more than um, traditional um, tools, such as I want to look at Xnerbs versus Patch. Okay, so let's just take some of these off here. Okay, and let's have a look at this um, shader. And the reason is, is we'll be able to see the continuity as you can see this highlight running around. So if I just turn off my edges for a second, you can see this highlight is running around fairly well. Okay. Now, if we just needed to patch something in like this, we could go and patch it in. And it starts off with G0. We can move over to G1 usually in a lot of cases. All right. Um, and G2 would likely fail, right? So if we just use our G1, and then we'll turn our edges off. Okay, you can see that if we use this uh, shader here, that this is kind of pronky. Okay, if we just go back to the shader here and we, oh, use X, so that was patch and it failed on a G2, okay. And then we can use X nerves instead. And you'll see that it's not always going to satisfy the tolerances and whatnot, and it will show an error, but we're getting a much smoother transition already. And we can just add that on and then we can hit J and we can join that. Okay. Um, another X nerves based tool is square. So let's try and patch this G zero. G1 and G2, and this is going to be okay, but we could also use square, okay, and we can look at the uh, continuity here of these edges, and we can go from G1 to G2, we look at our G2 continuity, and we can start to meddle with um, our spans and degrees and our tension until we get something that's useful to us, okay, so as we pull these out. In this case, we're not getting a lot, but um, that's another tool that can be really handy. And there's probably other videos out there on YouTube that show Square in a much uh, better capacity than what I'm showing it right now. So finally, what I want to show is um, Rebuild and Align. So Rebuild, let's turn our edges on. Um, so if I hit Rebuild, now I think this Tolerance version is available in indie license but explicit control is only available in um, the studio license and you can see it's doing something similar to raise degree here but we can actually choose our spans and degrees so if we do something like this what we can then do is we can extend our um, control vertices our cvs beyond the actual boundaries of the object, unlike raised degree. And then what can we do with that? We can go and we can select these sort of edges here, right? And we could pull them down. And this will be able to get you to make a shape that might not be as easy to do in, um, we can scale them in, right? Okay, and then we can also use a line. So if we try to take the align command, Okay, and that's going to do its best effort to try and align that to that. And we can look at the G2 scaling, and it's trying to align it to these CVs down here. Um, we can also blend in extra rows and add degrees and spans until we find something where it's going to work. Okay, so, so that way you can make these great transitions and get these really lovely shapes here. Like you can see how this fans out at the bottom here so that's about it 
Okay, so just to sum it up, guys, that's the differences between, you know, the main differences as I see them between the studio and the indie license. Now, um, the studio license is objectively better because it's got more stuff in it, but you may not need um, all of those, uh, you know, specialist XNURBS tools for your workflow, although they can come in handy a lot of the times where patch and loft don't work, but you can achieve most of what you could achieve with a studio license with an indie license. Now, if you're the kind of person that is going to just feel like you're missing out um, at any case, just buy the studio license. Um, it's, it's well worth it. But if you don't need all of those tools and you're not that kind of person, then the indie license might be more than enough for your requirements and um, it's still super, super powerful. So either way, you're getting a bargain because a lot of the competing softwares in this realm are way, way, way overpriced compared to plasticity. Whether you're getting the studio license or the indie license, Xnerbs, for example, when it's a plugin for other softwares comes in at $400, right? And it's fully included with plasticity and integrated and you're only paying $300 for the whole license. So it's a bargain whichever way you look at it. So I'll leave it at that guys and I'll see you all in the next one. Tschüss.